Through, I want to speak to you two guys about the love of God. And now I've been humbled this week studying on, on the love of God and the relationship we have to have with God. It is, it's not just attending church. It's not just uh, uh, saying that I'm a Christian, but it's understanding why we come to church, why we, why we worship, why we sing songs, why we gather, why we do fellowship. And it's all because of the love that God has for us, but also the love that we have for God. It is because of the love of God, of the love to God that we have. It's, it, it makes us want to be in his house of worship. It makes, me wa- it makes us want to be in his presence, not just in the church, but also at home. The hunger that stirs within us is because of the love of God in us. And then we, in, in return, we love God back with worship, with praise, with honoring him and who he is. So it's amazing how the love of God, when it comes into our lives, it makes all things new. Things that you should have been doing before, you had trouble doing. uh, uh, But now that the love of God is inside of you, it comes with ease. Because why? The Holy Spirit now dwells in you. And you're now able to love someone else. You're able to forgive easily. You're able to move forward past things and not let things hinder you. And it's beautiful because it's all because of the love of God in us. Somebody say the love of God. The love of God is extremely important in our lives. But here, this command, the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were, were after Jesus, trying to uh, uh, corner him and, and, and try to make him say something that was off. But Jesus always came with the right answers that they didn't want to hear. Because this this entire time, he's showing himself as the Messiah, as the Son of God coming to earth to set the captives free, to bring love to those, uh, freedom to the captives. And so here, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are after Jesus to, to, to corner him. And he says, what is the best, what is the most important commandments in the law of Moses? Because in the Jewish tradition, the law of Moses was what they handled, what they had to follow, and the, the, the religious laws. And, and so, yes, for a time, but in Jesus, everything is fulfilled. And Jesus says, these are the greatest two commandments. This is Jesus' words. He says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. With everything, with all that you are, you got to love God. This is the first and the greatest and greatest commandment. And second, equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. We love God. And I want to next week continue on with the love of, for others. Because once the love of God is inside of us, it's easier now to love others. Despite of their flaws, despite of the weaknesses that we may see, that we may witness. But the, when we have the love of God, it, it, it changes everything. It changes everything. It gives us peace when we understand the love of God in our lives. When we understand that because of the love of God, we are who we are. He rescued us. He made us safe. He, he gave us a place, a moment to be in his presence. And this, that's where we find the peace. The peace, because it's all through the love of God. It's the greatest thing to love God with everything we have. Luke chapter 19, go there with me. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. And this is where we're going to hang out in the book of Luke for the remaining moments that we have together. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, and called him by name Zacchaeus. He said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. Say, hmm. He has gone to be 
the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. I, I love this picture of Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus is, is a tax collector. And before, before he, he, he knew about Jesus, he heard about Jesus. And, and, and so he, he was a short in stature. This is legit. He was short. He couldn't see beyond the, the crowd. He, he, was, he was too short. But he made a way up this tree, a sycamore tree. And, and I don't have no short jokes because I don't want to offend anyone. But, but this is the, the facts. It's like you got to get to a higher level. you got to go, get to a higher level if you want to see Jesus. Whatever it takes, you got to get there because you got to see Jesus. I, wanna, I want you to be encouraged that wherever Jesus is, try to get there as fast as you can. No matter the cost or what you got to do, get your eyes on Jesus. Zacchaeus says, I heard about this, Jesus. I got to get a closer look. And, and, and it's dramatic because he's on top of a tree. Check this out. He's on top of a tree looking down and he's trying to get a good sight. And Jesus sees him. Jesus sees him because obviously he stands out from the rest. Who's climbing a tree? But Jesus is caught by Zacchaeus' actions of getting a closer look or a better view. And he says, Zacchaeus, I'm gonna, I want to eat with you today. I want to dine with you. I want to I go to your home today. Know that Jesus is always intentional about everything he does. God is not a God of coincidence. He's a God of purpose. God is sovereign. He's powerful. He's all-knowing. And in that insight, I can imagine Jesus seeing Zacchaeus' hunger to get to know him more. And he says, today I, I want to be with you. We're going to want to have an intimate moment. And he was joyful. Zacchaeus was excited. The Messiah, the famous one. He's going to eat with me. But it was a, there was a task at hand. It was a relationship that Jesus wanted to establish. And the story tells us that because of his excitement, all of a sudden, Zacchaeus says, we don't know what the conversation is about. But Jesus here is, 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 is telling Zacchaeus, after he says this, if I have cheated anyone of their taxes, if I have done anything wrong, I'm going to give it to them back four times of what I have taken. So this is the thing. It was, it was highway robbery when they were collecting taxes. It was, it was not fair for the people. And the people looked at the tax collectors as evil men and men and, and said, you're trying to take my, our livelihood away from us. And here it is, Jesus sitting at the table with Zacchaeus in, a, in establishing a relationship. Zacchaeus says, I need to give of what I have taken. There was conviction that was brought into his soul and his spirit. But check this out. It's the action that Zacchaeus took that Jesus then says, today salvation has entered this home. Because it's in, in the action of relationship when it's genuine that we come in repentance unto God. Zacchaeus was joyful, excited that Jesus was in his home, was coming to his home. But as they were having relationship, the Holy Spirit came to bring conviction to Zacchaeus. Only God can move your soul and your spirit to such a point that you have to admit where you're wrong. And us, the church, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to point out things in our lives that are wrong unto God, that are sinful unto God, that are not pleasing unto God. Why? Because it's important for, have to, for us to have a transparent relationship with God. 
And so here the Holy Spirit has to come in to bring conviction to our soul, to our spirit, to our mind. The Holy Spirit, can you correct me where I am wrong? And this is the love of God shown to us that we show our love to God by repenting of our, of our sins. That, that the, when the conviction hits, we don't ignore the conviction. That we come onto the presence of God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my wrongdoing. Holy Spirit, thank you because I have a relationship with you. There's nothing greater than to have a friend to point out the errors in your life. That's accountability. And we are not any, none of us are perfect. I mean, if, if anyone here is perfect, I mean, I, I just want to. But no one of us is perfect. We're sinful, we're broken, we fall, and we get right back up. But the, the point is that it's important for us to get back up. But how do we get back up? By asking God to forgive us of our sins. This beautiful story of Zacchaeus, he, he, he was a tax collector and, 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 and cheating the people. But when God came into his home, he said, Zacchaeus, I want to sit with you. But the people said, that's a sinner. That's a man that does wrong. You can't worry about what the people saying around you. It could be true. But what Zacchaeus did after that was change his life. And when God brings conviction and we accept God's conviction, we say yes to God, and that, that is all that matters. Now you, you want to do things right. When God comes into your life, what you consider to be okay, even though they were wrong and sinful, you were okay with. But all of a sudden, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, brings conviction, you, you feel and do certain things that are according to God's will. It's like you're trying to make it up. But you have to show a life transformation. I used to do that. I am no longer that. Lord, thank you for your mercy and grace. I'm growing in the spirit. I'm growing in relationship with you, Lord God. The things that I used to do that used to not even bother me now bother me. Thank you for that because I'm growing in relationship with you, Lord God. Thank you for your love that entered my life, entered my home because I am now seeing the things how you see them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God takes the initiative and we respond. God takes the initiative and we respond to that. So when, when, how did God take the initiative with Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was on a tree. He took the initiative of getting close and Jesus said, I'm calling you. He didn't say repent before I call you. He says, I'm calling you. Jesus took the initiative, Zacchaeus opened the door of his home, and transformation happened because there was a response to Jesus. Zacchaeus responded to Jesus calling. He said, yes, Lord, come into my home. But God had something else planned, bring conviction to his heart so his life can be changed. How many of you want the change of God in your life? How many of you want the change of God in your life to transform you from the inside out? God takes the initiative and we respond to the call. What is the relationship with God? It means that we are receiving communication from God about himself through his word and the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is vital in our growing relationship with Jesus. The presence of the Holy Spirit is vital for us to grow with, in relationship with Jesus. Through his word, is, that's communication. Relationship is a communication with God. Communication through his word, daily reading of scripture, daily encountering with the Holy Spirit. As you sit studying scripture, invite the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what the scripture says. Invite the Holy Spirit to sit with you every moment. Say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to study your word. Can you come and reveal your truth to me? And that's the constant communication that we need as believers, that it is through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit that God speaks to us. The presence of the Holy Spirit is vital in our growing relationship with Jesus. It's important that he, Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. And so we believe that the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Somebody say all. All truth. A devoted life to grow, growing spirituality, your spirituality. The way we grow our spiritual lives with God is, number one, Bible. 
We need to study scripture. We need to dive in God to man. That is God speaking to man through his word. God speaking to man. Number two, prayer. Man to God. Prayer is man, us men, speaking to God. Number three, repentance of sin and staying away from it. The repentance of sin, this is a relationship that we have with God. Reading of, of scripture, the prayer and repentance of our sin and avoiding sin. Running the opposite way, turning from sin. I no longer want to do that. I want to honor God and live a holy life and righteous unto God. But we got to make a decision to turn away. And because of the love that we have for God, we want to turn from that. Because if it offends God, we don't want to go that route. We got to know that we have to live holy on to Jesus. Holy on to Jesus. Repentance of sin and staying away from it. Run. Run. In Luke chapter 17, I, I want you to go there with me. And Jesus here is addressing sin. Jesus addressing sin in Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. It says, one day Jesus and his disciples said to his disciples, there will always be temptation, temptation to sin. But what sorrow awaits a person who does the tempting? It will be better to be thrown into the sea with a million, with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of the little ones to fall into sin. So watch yourself. If, any, any, if another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you, Seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness. You must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. You see here, so Jesus addressing sin. He says, these are the steps. We, we will always be tempted to sin. Temptation will always be there. But then be careful with those who cause the tempting. It is better for them to hang, to put a, a stone around their necks and, and throw themselves. Meaning, it is dangerous if you are intentionally causing someone to sin. Yeah, it's okay. And encouraging the sin. Be very careful. But here it is. Watch yourselves. And if any believer is sinning, call them out. This is love. This is the, God, the, 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 the love of God that we have for the, the, the love that we have for God and God has for us, but also the love that we have for people. You want to be able to help your, your brothers and sisters out. You have to call it out in love. And it's all in love. It's not judgment. It's all in love. Why? Because we're growing together. Because we love God, we want to see others also love God. And it, it's an act of repentance. It's an act of love. It's an act of relationship. I love God, but I also love you. And I don't want you to fall into the traps of the enemy. I want you to thrive in your growth in relationship with God and with the church. Come on, somebody. Because this is what God is calling us to live holy and righteous unto him. Why? Because we love God. We love God. Number four, fellowship. Believers to believers. This is when we come together in fellowship. This is fellowship. Later on, we're going to be hanging out in the lobby, and that's fellowship. Hey, how are you? How, how's life? How can I pray for you? Hey, what's your name? Well, I haven't met you. Hey, have you been here before? You see, that's the relationship. And don't, don't, don't walk out without first saying hi to three people that you don't know. Come on, just at least three people. You see, because that's the, how we grow in fellowship. It's biblical, and God is calling us to live in fellowship with one another. It's not just, hey, you're in sin. What's up? What are you doing? You know, no, no. It's, it's like, hey, how can I pray for you? We're, we're quick to judge and, and, and point fingers, and, and right away, it's like, I'm holier than thou. No, no, no. We're all in this together, and we need Jesus. We love God. He loves us, and I love you. I want us all to grow in relationship with God, and it's vitally important that we ask the Holy Spirit for his mercy, grace, and love. Pastor, I, I struggle with loving people. I, it's not easy for me. Man, you don't even know what happened at work. Oh, you don't even know. Pastor, pray for me. I get it. I get it. You don't know what my cousin did. 
I know, I get it. But when we have the love of God within us, we're able to forgive, let go, and move forward. If the person also repents of their sins, you got to encourage that as well. Come on, bro, that's great. That's awesome. You, we're growing now. Can, can, I pray, can I continue praying for you? And this is the love of God that we have for one another in the fellowship of believers, believer to believer. Hey, how can I pray for you? How can I be there for you? Can, can I serve you in any way? And that is what we are called to do, to have a fellowship with believers. In John chapter 15, verse 12, it says, this is my command. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Man, that is Jesus' wonderful words right there. This is my command. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. How many of you know, know that God loves you? If you don't know, I want to tell you, Jesus loves you. So that love that God has for you, you got to bring it back to your brothers and sisters because that is what Jesus is asking us to do. He commands us to love one another. This is how we grow in the spirit and, and, and in relationship with God and with each other. Number five, witness. Witness. Believer to the unbeliever. The believer to the unbeliever. In relationship. Wow, what God has done with me. I want to tell you about it. I want to tell you about it. Hey, have you, have, I, I, I've noticed this, that I, I, I post a Bible verse compared to a picture with my family, and I get way more likes on my family pictures than verses that I post. It, but I keep putting it because somebody's reading it. It's better to read the words of God than to read the words of my own words. It's better to read the words of God than reading the words of man. Because why? The words of God never return back void. They have an impact. They make a change. They have a, a power and they bring change to our lives. Come on, somebody. Because the word of God is powerful. Witness. Believer to unbeliever. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Then he said, when I, was, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Hmm. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Let's stop right there. Everything... When I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Mm. In the Old Testament, they read it as stories, as law, as the promises of God. And Jesus was here saying, everything in the Old Testament was pointing to me. Hmm. Everything in the Old Testament was pointing to me. And as I was with you, I was teaching you things. But here it says that then he opened up their eyes so that he can see, they can understand and see the scriptures. I want you to know that you won't fully understand the scriptures until God reveals it to you and opens up your mind and your eyes to when you read scripture, you're like, wow, and they're popping out like 3D in your, in your, in your, in your thoughts and your mind, and it becomes a living river that flows from the pages and jumps onto your soul and your spirit, and becomes because this is the revelation that only comes from God. And this is why you have to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, reveal your word to me. Reveal God's truth to me. Because this only comes from God. It's not that how much you study. It's not how much you know. It is a revelation from God. Come on, somebody. Because we have to ask God to reveal his truth to us. And Jesus here opens up their minds. 
to understand scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and raised from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message will be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send you the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with the power from heaven. I have the, the, it says in the Old Testament that the Son of Man must die. And this is the fulfillment. Je Jesus is here is prophesying and declaring what is going to happen in his life. And he's saying, this was already prophesied that it must happen. And I'm here to fulfill what the mission the Father has sent me to do. It is to die and be here to save the, the sinners of their sin and bring them to life. Bring them to life. And it's only by the, by the revelation and the power of God that we receive salvation. It is powerful here how God, God opens up their eyes to, for the scriptures to be revealed to them. But here it says, he's like, you are, the, you are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit. You are witnesses to all this. You live with me. You've seen what I've done. You're going to be witnesses also of the crucifixion. But this is the thing. I need for you to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. That is going to be the game changer. When you open up your mouth, the Holy Spirit will reveal to, through you who God truly is. And that is going to be the impact in the lives of people. When you open up your mouth, the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon the lives who are listening. We must witness we must speak of the power of God. We must speak hmm, with boldness, with assurance that, yes, we are sinners, but Jesus made a way for us to have life and life in abundance. Life in abundance. We are led by God. We are led by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. We are led by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. We are led by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. You have to understand that the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you receive the Father, you receive Jesus, and you receive the Holy Spirit that guides you into all truth. And it is powerful because when we know that the living power of the Holy Spirit is within us, man, everything changes. Everything is made new. And we're able to live in fulfillment to the promises and the will of God. Salvation comes from God alone. Salvation comes from God alone alone. There's no other place, there's no other way for us to have eternal salvation if it's not through Jesus. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. We will not see the Father if it's not through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. He is the life. And through God alone, we have salvation. Not in any other God. Not how good we are because none of us are good. And the Bible says if we say that we're, that we're good, we're liars. Come on, somebody. Because we need the love of God in our lives. And this is the only truth and salvation that Jesus died for us on the cross to give us life and life in abundance. And he is here to give us a new life is for us to turn from sin and say yes to Jesus. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. I want you to know that no matter what you are, what is told on, on social media, on YouTube, on the news, doesn't matter what you read, if it's contrary to telling you that salvation is not only through Jesus, you can turn it off and, and, and move and go the opposite way. Turn to Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus and say, Lord, reveal your truth to me in the name of Jesus. There's too much going on right now. There's too much here, she said, and, and what's truth, what's not, and, and the confusion is real. 
A spirit of confusion is real. The spirit of confusion is real. And we have to stand against all demonic forces that's trying to bring confusion to us, the church, and the people. So in the name of Jesus, stand up and believe God's word to be truth. No matter what anyone says, this is what we believe in the true word of God. We devote our lives to prayer. We devote our lives to the power of God. And we devote our lives to scripture because it is how God speaks to us to us. Salvation comes from God and God alone. God can forgive you. God can restore you. And God wants to bless you. God can forgive you of your sins. God can restore you. And God can bless you. It all comes from him. But we have to live a life connected to the promises of God. Love God. Love people. Love God with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything. It is the reason why we worship because we love God. It is the reason we come to church because we love God. It is a reason we sing songs, we pray, we come together, we drink coffee together and fellowship. Why? Because of the love of God. We care for one another because of the love of God. And because we love God, it comes out as worship. Lord, I worship you. You're, what you're saying is, Lord, I love you. I love you. We call our date of prayer. Lord, I'm going to be there because I love you. Let's sing a song. Yes, Lord, because I love you. Spend time in the presence of God. Yes, Lord, because I love you. With my mind, soul, and spirit. Do I have an opportunity, but I can't, I can't, I can't say the truth for you? I, can, can I lie, Lord? No, 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 no. I'm going to say the truth because I love you. Can I get an advantage because I may not say the truth? Be careful. No, I love God too much for this. I'm going to say the truth because I love you. Our ways of being, our character has to be molded by God. Lord, I'm going to spend time in your presence for you to reveal who I am and how I need to change because I love you and I want to honor you. Church, Jesus loves us. And it's a powerful truth to understand that because he loves us, he wants to set us free. 